took it for granted that our water was being taken care of and that our health was being watched over. Today marks eight years since the city of Flint switched its water source to the Flint River, ultimately leading to the water crisis. The decision was made while the city was under emergency management by the state of Michigan. The water pulled from the Flint River was not properly treated and ended up corroding pipes, allowing lead to leach into the water supply, causing nearly 100,000 people to be exposed to dangerously high lead levels in their tap water. So how do we get to this point today. On April 25th, 2014, that is when Flint switched its water source to the Flint River and began treating raw water for the first time in decades. By October 2014, General Motors switched its Flint plant off the city's water supply after saying the automaker's car parts were rusting. By December of the same year, Flint was in violation of the EPA's Safe Drinking Water Act due to detection of high levels of disinfection byproducts. Then in February of 2015, EPA official Miguel del Toro sent a memo to the MDEQ warning of high lead levels. But it wasn't until October of 2015, Flint, Flint actually switched back to getting pre-treated water from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Today, activists gathered in Flint to mark the eight-year anniversary of Flint's water source switch to bring awareness to things they say still need to change in the state of Michigan to ensure this never happens again. And Courtney, what did they share with you today? Flint water activists say that eight years later, the city of Flint is still broken. People that I spoke to today said that the city has replaced lead pipes as well as galvanized pipes as well. But they say that they still do not trust Flint elected leaders as well as leaders in Lansing. Activists today traveled as far as Benton Harbor to stand with the people of Flint as their city in West Michigan is now facing high lead levels in its water. Well, what what happened in Flint was horrible. Activists also acknowledge how Flint has led to communities across the nation taking action to improve water quality before it gets to a crisis like Flint experience. Claire McClinton tells me she lived through the crisis in Flint but says the fight continues. One of the things McClinton says needs to be done is get rid of the Michigan Emergency Manager Law, a law that was established in 1976 and revised in 1990. It says the state can intervene in local governments if there are financial emergencies. That is what happened in Flint prior to the water source switch, which led to the water crisis. And the other thing that we've asked for, and we are not hearing our governor, the last governor or this governor, or no legislation have we heard of to abolish the emergency manager law that drove us into this poison disaster in the first place. In December 2021, Flint native and state senator Jim Ananick introduced legislation that would repeal this emergency manager law. Now, I reached out to, out to his office today, and they said that these bills have not, rele have not released and not been sent to committee yet, but Ananick is hopeful that in the coming months, these bills, these legislation will be sent to committee. Coming up tonight on Mid Michigan Now at 6 o'clock, I talked to a mother on why she can't cannot trust the water. Now the deadline is approaching for the more than $600 million Flint water crisis settlement. The claims must be filed in 17 days. And this is who qualifies for the settlement. Any adult, property owner, business owner, or minor child who was in Flint between April 25th, 2014 through November 16th, 2020. This settlement will give 80% of the funds to people who were under the age of 18 at the time of the crisis, with a large majority going to children under the age of six. The remaining money will be for adults, business owners, property owners, for damage and uh, special education services as well in Genesee County. It is important to note people who registered last year to participate in the settlement must still file a claim with all of the documentation needed. We have more details at midmichigannow.com on what paperwork you need to submit along with a number in case you need help from any of the attorneys working on the settlement. Go Go to midmichigannow.com and just search Flint Water Settlement. Meanwhile, there are nine people facing charges in connection to Flint's water crisis. All are former or current state and city employees, including former Governor Rick Snyder. Snyder's former Chief of Staff, Jared Agan, former advisor to the Governor, Richard Baird, 
Former Flint emergency managers Gerald Ambrose and Darnell Early. Former Flint Public Works Director Howard Croft. And Nick Lyon, Nancy Peeler and Eden Wells, who all worked at the State Health Department. The most severe charges came down for Wells and Lyon. They both face nine counts of involuntary manslaughter. From tie-dyeing cloth all natural with bugs, to learning how to grow your own garden. This event at Dow High School in Midland is helping people understand how to be more environmentally friendly. Gina Malcheski is with the Midland section of the American Chemical Society and one of the organizers of this annual event commemorating Earth Day. She says educating and having the community come to things like this brings awareness. Planting a tree, whether it's not running the water while you brush your teeth, whether it's planting a garden, it's not some big problem that we can't tackle. We each of us have to contribute to the solution. For people like Steve Meyer, who brought his daughter Caroline, he believes the younger generations need to be exposed early to these concepts. Do our part to be good stewards of the environment and nature and to continue to teach every generation to do their part as well. To teach people about the importance of wildlife in mid-Michigan, Will Houghton takes people on eco-tours by boat through the Shiawassee National Wildlife Refuge. Where we guide is 32 square miles of, or 18,000 acres of rivers, little things like fertilizing your lawn or where you put your waste oil, things like that, how important it is to our ecology.